Hello everyone, today we're gonna see how to make our AI attack the player. So as you can see here on the screen, the AI attack me and if I move out of his range, he start chasing me until I stop or catch up to me and he can attack again. So we're gonna see exactly how to do this. One of the first thing that we have to do is having our animation. So we're gonna import the animation to our project. So in the link description below, you should have the animation for attack or you can use your own animation as well. So I'm gonna use one that is already working with the UE5 mannequin. So we don't have to do retarget anything like this. So when it's imported, you put that wherever you need in your project. So I put that in animation folder and I put the animation right here. As you can see here, we have the animation. So you can see our character is attacking. So sometime when you import an animation, you just have to select the good skeleton to it. So by double clicking on it, you will be able to assign a skeleton. Sometime it's doing this. I don't know if it's going to do that for you or not. As I already own that animation, I don't, I can't show you exactly what it's doing, but you may have a black animation. So you just have to target that to your own character and you should be all good with this. So when you have your animation, in your game you just click on retarget not retarget sorry create and we're going to create an animation montage and just click on this and you have your animation montage as you can see here right so we're all good with this so now on our character folder we're going to create a blueprint interface and this interface will be used for attacking with our ai Instead of casting to the character, we're going to use an interface because it's more convenient and it's used less resources. So I'm going to call that NT, ENT, combat. I'm going to open it. And the function here, I'm going to call that melee attack. I'm just going to compile and save and we're all good with this. We don't need to do anything else in the interface. So we're going to go to our NPC. So I rename in my NPC master. So you can do same if you want. So here in the NPC, we're going to go under the class setting and we're going to implement our interface. So on the detail panel here on the side, you can click add and you can search for our interface. So combat interface and we're going to have it right here. We we'll select this one and we we'll compile and save that. The next step is going to our event graph. And as we have the interface implement, it's mean that we're going to have access. Just want to show you, we're going to have access to this function here, melee attack, because it's implemented to our character. So if we search even melee attack, and you know that is the one for the interface because it has the blue little card here, the map on the corner. So you know that you have the good one. So from this, we're going to play our animation montage. So just play anim montage. So this one here, the first one, we're going to select this one. The animation that we want to play is going to be the one that we imported AS. So we can select this animation and you should be all set with this. Now we have to select the skeleton that the animation is going to play on, drag this. And we're going to connect this to in skeleton mesh component. So now the animation is going to play on this. So now we'll be all set and we're all good for our interface and our NPC. Now we're going to make our way to the behavior tree. So we're going to go to my folder blueprint, uh, sorry, character, this one here. So we're going to get our behavior tree. So we have our behavior tree that look like this. So we're going to do some modification on this. First thing, we're going to create a new task. So we're going to go on the top here and we're going to select the first one. So blueprint base and we're going to create that new task and I'm going to put in the folder task and I'm going to just remove this and I'm going to call that melee attack. And in that task here, we're going to click on the function right here. We have override. We're going to take the receive execute AI from the execute AI here. We're going to all be on our keyboard to have access to a branch. We're going to connect that branch to the event receive from that. We're going to drag from our control panel and we're going to does implement interface. 
which is the interface that we created so we just have to select that interface so to us combat interface so we're going to select this and plug this to the condition so if it does implement the interface it means that it's going to be true so something's going to happen well what's going to happen is we're going to try drag from our controller panel and we're going to search for that melee attack and we're going to take the melee attack message and this one is basically the interface I'm just going to do a reroute node and the animation that we use we're going to do a delay and the timing for the animation that we imported to the project is 1.5 seconds so you have to know the duration of your own animation if you want your animation to have time to finish when this is done you can just drag from the complete and we're going to finish finish the execute and we're going to make sure that we tick this box so it's successfully done so when this is going to get called in our uh, behavior tree it's going to call the attack it's going to wait that the animation finish and it's going to continue the code here so we're going to go back to our animation blueprint and in the animation blueprint here we have to create a service so this time I'm going to go on new service on the top here and we have the task here so I'm just going to go in task and I'm going to put the service right there I'm going to call that BT service underscore is player in melee range and when we're in that task that service I mean so what we're going to do we're going to create two variables so just create one variable and this one will be our blackboard and in the boolean we're going to just search for blackboard we're going to take the key selector so we can access to our blackboard we're going to make sure that it's instant editable so we can change that on the fly we're going to add a new variable and this one will be our mailing range and it's going to be a float we're going to compile so we can have access to the default value in the detail panel we're going to click on this and it's going to be 250 so you put the value that you want so i'm going to put 250 because i think it's good enough if you think it's too far for attack you can lower this number so from that we're going to take the overwrite here and we're going to even receive activation ai so reserve uh receive activation ai i'm going to take this one here and from the control panel here we're going to get distance to and the other actor is going to be the player character so get player character and the return value of this we're going to drag from that we're going to do less or equal and it's going to be the value of our main mini range <laughs> the value of our melee range so we're just going to drag from that and just plug it right there we're going to take our blackboard we're going to drag it there and do a get from the blackboard we're going to set the value and we're going to set a value as bold so the first one right here and we're going to plug those two together there you go and the key value here we can connect that directly to our mailing range without any issue and we'll be all set so when this get called it's going to get the distance to the player character right and it's going to make the range of 250 and it's going to set that value to our blackboard which we're going to use in our behavior tree so we're going to save everything going to go to our behavior tree and now the fun is starting we're going to try not try but we're going to do some modification here so what i'm going to do i'm just going to move the first part here just a little bit to give us some space so here we have our chase when it's moved to the player so we're going to keep that like this so we're going to just do a comment on that by pressing c and we're going to call that move to player from the sequence here we're going to drive from that and we're going to use a simple parallel which is going to give us access to do two action almost at the same time the animation here will be also our move to but it's going to move to to our target actor like this one here so we're going to make sure that on the keyboard here the keyboard the blackboard key we are selecting our target actor 
and also here we're gonna drag from that and it's gonna be our attack player so it's gonna be our new task that we created so we can drag from that and get our new task and we're gonna select the new task melee attack that we created we're gonna click on this task and everything is fine for this there's nothing to change however we're gonna right click and add a decorator and it's gonna be a blackboard we're gonna click on this blackboard and it's gonna be our is player melee in range so we need that variable so remember we created uh, we were speaking about this but we have to create that variable so we're going to go to our blackboard and we're just going to have a key it's going to be a bowl and we're going to call this is player in range melee range i mean like this so now we're going to have access to this value so we can save go back to our behavior tree so when we click back on our blackboard here instead of self we should have access to is player in melee range we're going to click on this and we're gonna save so basically what he's doing is that he's gonna chase the player so he's gonna go move towards the player but when it's next to the player this help us to do almost two actions at the same time so he's gonna still go towards the player and also attack using the animation that we are uh, we did set up so it's going to be almost those two actions at the same time. If you don't do this and you put your simple parallel right here and you connect move to and this one here, the attack, your the enemy will attack nonstop. So you kind of going to get stuck in the infinite loop. So it's not what we want. So from that, we're just going to select that, do a comment by pressing C and we're going to just put attack player. And here on the simple parallel, we don't want this to finish immediately. We want to have the time of moving to and having the computer attack. So that's important here that on a simple parallel that we change and put their delay, which means that it's going to do this way that this is done. If you leave it at immediate, it will never do this. So make sure that you do the delay here. It's really, really important. So now we have this. There is one more thing that we have to do. So I'm just going to put a little comment here for the future. So this is move to player less known location. There we go. So we know exactly what does this does. And here on the chase selector on the top, we're going to right click and we're going to add the service. And we're going to add the service that we created. So is player in melee range. So click on this. We're going to click on the color green here, so on our service. And the self actor will be changed for is player in melee range. And we're going to check this box. Not check this box, but we're going to select the uh, player in melee range and we're going to save this. So now we have all our code that's going to make our AI go towards the player and also attack the player. So now. We're going to go back to our NPC master and we're going to click on the mesh here and we're going to click on the animation that we're using so we can browse to that animation by clicking on the folder here. It's going to bring us to the many animation and now you have the many animation like this. However, we're going to have to do some modification to be able to use our animation. So we already have a cache here for our locomotion, which is exactly what we need. However, we need a cache for our main here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the main here. I'm going to search for cache. I'm going to just create a new cache. And I'm going to call this exactly the main. So main state cache. And I'm going to do the same thing on the locomotion here. I'm going to call that cache. So we have our default slot here. So we're going to keep this, but we're going to move that out of the way here. And we're going to unplug this by holding Alt on the keyboard. And here we're going to search for a layered blend per bone. And we're going to take this. Our default slot will be connected to our blend pose 0. And we can connect this to the control rig. So here the normal pose will be our locomotion. So we can just search for locomotion. So locomotion going to use the cache locomotion right here 
and we have our default slot here that we're gonna also use our locomotion in it. So locomotion cache here. And we're gonna compile this. So now the animation still work. We're all good with this. So now we're gonna click on our layer blend per bone. I'm gonna add a layer. So we're gonna click on layer index and we're gonna add a branch filter. And we're gonna click on that index and the bone name here it's important that it's exactly where you want your animation to play. So we're going to understand in a few seconds. So when we click on the skeleton bone right here, we want that the animation for attack play from the spine one all the way up. When in the same time, the bottom part will still move and chasing us. So it's going to walk. If you don't do this, it's going to stop. We'll have no more movement here for your legs and the animation is going to play. So it's important that we're taking the name here, so spine underscore zero one. So we're gonna go back to our animation. And here in the animation, we're gonna put the bone name. So it's gonna be spine underscore zero one. I'm gonna blend a five. So right in the middle. So I think it's gonna be fine and look good. So now we're all set up for that. So I think there's absolutely nothing else to do. So I think we're ready to try it out. So we're going to do play. And we're going to go, the AI is chasing us, arrive at us, attack us. And if we move out of the way, you see, he can still attack and move at the same time. So that's exactly what we need. So that's perfect. You can see it's working. If I go away. The AI chase us, but it's not attacking anymore. And we'll stop in here and the AI is attacking us. So I think I will leave you on this and I will catch you on the next uh, video and probably doing some damage with the AI. So thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.